It is Wednesday, my dudes, and of course you know what that means. It is time once again to revisit the construction of Velocity Lake. And uh, I'm using the words construction of Velocity Lake very deliberately because this is the penultimate episode of this series. As in, in which we build something. It loses its gravity quite a bit when I add that last little qualifier. But yes... This episode's, well, this theme park's construction ends at the end of episode 69, which is epic, but also kind of sad because we were on episode 68 right now. And I mentioned last week, I haven't actually uploaded that video yet, so I have no idea how well received that was, but I mentioned last week that uh, this, this series, Velocity Lake, is going to be the last iteration of Planet Coaster as it is currently presented on this channel. Uh, on this channel. That was a horrible sentence. The Velocity Lake is going to be the end of Planet Coaster on Matt Lown. At least, you know, again, as we know it, I don't know if changing the formula is going to be the way forward or doing something completely different. But, yeah, in terms of weekly episodes in which we build something in a theme park in Planet Coaster... Our days are numbered. We've only got this week and next week to cover, you know, the construction. And then there will be an episode 70, just because, hey, I I don't want this series to end on episode 69, uh, because that would not be very nice. Uh, But also because I want to do, like, an overview of the theme park, and I did an overview of Neptune. Well, I've done an overview of all my theme parks that I've built in Planet Coaster over the years. Gosh, that feels weird to say over the years. I still think of Planet Coaster has been like this new game, but there you go. Uh, yes, I did an overview for Neptune Park, which is the last big theme park I built in Planet Coaster on this channel. And, you know, I did my standard walking around, talking about all the rides, stuff like that. But I brought Beth along for the ride, uh, pun intended there, where um, I, I don't mean that literally. She just sat in the room with me and just watched me walk around. But Beth is like deathly afraid of roller coasters, so it was pretty funny. Because <laughs> I'm sadistic. Now I say it out loud, it sounds a lot worse than how it sounded in my head. But yeah, she doesn't really like roller coasters. So it's kind of funny just to see her face her fears on the rides we have uh, in Neptune Park. And now we can do that again in um, Velocity Lake. But she wants to get better. She's never actually ridden on a roller coaster in real life. And there is a roller coaster near where I live. It's tiny. I think it's like a wild mouse. It's one. Of, I don't know if America has theme parks like this. Um, but in the UK, there's a lot of... And I'm doing the air quotes thing, theme parks, but most of them are like children. Like they're just a farm with a merry-go-round in them, but they're listed on Google Maps as theme parks. Now, there are two near me. I live in Devon, which is in the southwest of England, and there's a couple. The big one is Flambards, which is in Cornwall near Falmouth. Uh, quite a long drive. It's like an hour and a half drive away. Can't be dealing with that. But there is another one called Creeley Adventure Park that's only like 40 minutes away from my house. And that has two roller coasters. So I thought Beth could get, get warmed up to the idea of going on roller coasters. Because ultimately it would be nice to take it to somewhere like Thorpe Park or Alton Towers, which are the two big theme parks in the UK. Uh, there's Blackpool as well. That's another big theme park. But that's a very long way from me. That's like the literal other end of the country. I know all Americans now laughing in the comments because it's still a tiny distance for them. But I don't know. It's a long way for me. I can't be bothered. I don't like I don't like change. I don't like straying from my comfort zone. And uh, I've been to Blackpool and Alton Towers. And I must say I do prefer Alton towers so case moot anyway point moot anyway i don't know i kind of said that sentence aloud without really thinking about it and it didn't really make a lot of sense uh, yes i would like to take her to somewhere like alton towers or thorpe, thorpe park eventually but i'd like to just make sure she is open to the idea of going on roller coasters by taking her to a small theme park first just to establish that yes she will actually go on them we won't just get to alton towers and can't go on anything too scared so um yes yeah, so i'm thinking about going to a uh, creely theme park it's for ch- designed for children but there is a i think it's a wild mouse coaster it's uh i could just google it i know but i went on their website and it has like oh click here for rides and it's called like something epic like thunder twister extreme or something but there's no pictures of it the only picture shows a tiny bit of track which looks like the uh the wild mouse style track where it's just uh tubes with a cross beam that describes every roller coaster track now i say it out loud but it's not like the bnm style track where it's really big designed to cope with high force it's the simplest most spindly track you could imagine and the car itself is just one row of seats and it's four seats wide which is the typical setup for uh 
wild mouse coaster. So I suspect it's a wild mouse. But it's a good introduction to roller coaster nonetheless. It's a good day out. Little afternoon. We've got the log flume there, I think, as well. I think there's a log flume. And it's in Exeter. So it's like a different city to the one I live in. So we can just walk around the new city. Obviously keeping two meters from everyone. Although this video goes up in two weeks. So may maybe the pandemic is over. And everyone, it all just got better. It's un it's unlikely now. I now I think about it, but you know, I could. One can always hope. One can always hope. Uh, past Matt, let me have this. <laughs> uh, anyway, what are we doing in today's episode of Velocity Lake? Well, I'm glad you guys asked. <laughs> uh, five minutes ago, probably when the episode started, and I just didn't address it at all. Well, I'll tell you, dear viewers, we're just going to be basically working on all the stuff we started last week. So we're going to finish off the infrastructure that involves connecting the road that the staff used to get from the main entrance of the theme park to the staff area for the hotel and as you can see we're also extending that road up to the hotel itself and making a little depot so that there's a believable area where deliveries can get sent to for servicing the hotel and also adds a proper termination for the little car that goes around the edge of the park i have a service road that runs around the perimeter of velocity lake and i added one of those little back lot tour rides i sort of sunk it into the path so we could like the road was being used like there's just always a little car going around the theme park that's got like an engineer on it or something like that but then it just gets to the hotel and it just drives into the side of the hotel where it just then despawns i've just got it on test mode and it just continually does its circuit and then just like derails at the end uh, but i thought i'd actually like mask the end of that ride in this episode and uh add like a little door that goes into the actual hotel's depot and that's where it terminates hypothetically i mean it doesn't make a lot of sense when you just watch the car like oh it just went to the hotel and then disappeared and, and now another car is going into the hotel and then just disappears but it's more like it's a background animation that you wouldn't really notice if you're just looking at this theme park how i look at planet coaster theme parks and that is like a model railway where it's just a model and you're just like, yeah, you go, you go to like a model railway museum or something like that big one in Germany, Miniature Wonderland or something like that. And yeah, you got like little air, they got like an airport and there are planes in the airport, but they're not taking off or landing. They're just taxiing around in a circle. And that's a bad example because I think this particular model railway, they actually do take off in air quotes, like they're on like uh, transparent sticks and then they get raised into the air. As a take off, has anyone, better example, has anyone here played Grand Theft Auto 4? It's a small game, you may have heard of it. But if you go to the airport in Grand Theft Auto 4, there's like one or two like big airplanes, like Boeing 7, 707s, I don't know what they are. And, um, uh, but they never take off, they just taxi around and around and around. Because ultimately it's not really where the player is supposed to go. They're just there to overall make the world a little bit more lived in, a little bit more fleshed out, a little bit more realistic. You can just see, as you drive past the airport, you see big planes taxiing around. That's the effect I went for with the uh, little uh, thing, the, the, the truck that goes around the perimeter of this park. And that's probably one of the weirdest, most long-winded explanations I've ever done on this series. And Sad Face probably will do, because again, this series is coming to an end. And uh, and yeah, I I I, ha I will carry on doing Planet Coaster content. I feel I don't want to I don't want to rehash last week's episode too much because it was only last week. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I do plan on not I'm not going to terminate Planet Coaster from the Matt Lown cinematic universe completely. But it's definitely going to be over in its in its current form. I know that much. Anyway, as you can see, we've now finished the little depot area on the edge of the hotel, and I think it looks pretty good. Again, you know, it could be a little bit more fleshed out if we were going for total realism, but we're not. We're going for, like, this is just part off to the edge of the map that just makes the whole world look a little bit more realistic, a little bit more lived in, but not necessarily ultra-realistic 5,000 or whatever. Um, at the moment, the road is pretty bare because it's just a path with no curb, so we need to dress it up a little bit to make it look a little bit more believable as a road with substantial infrastructure going into its construction. So we're just going to extend some of these pieces that we placed last episode. I think we placed them last episode anyway. And as you can see, the road gets a little bit wider just here because this will be the staff, the staff car park that I, I think I've talked about this car park as like as if it already existed in previous episodes. But I'm pretty sure I just constructed it in this episode, didn't I? I won't lie to you guys. I haven't really been paying that much attention to the screen because <laughs> that's the level of professionalism that I strive for in this series. I like basically 
record hours and hours and hours, like 20 hours of footage, and then edit all those foot- all that footage into episodes, or basically I make one giant episode that's like three hours long. And then I cut that episode up into what I believe to be acceptable episode lengths, and then I just forget about it for nine months. And then it was like, oh my goodness, we're running out of Velocity Lake episodes on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to go and just open up the next one that needs commentating over, and then Robert your father's brother, here we are today. I'm not commentating over this piece of footage that I edited months ago, I feel. I think it was only like July, actually, I edited this footage. Uh, but regardless, it's a long time, you know. I, I work on a cycle of four days, my memory, and then I just don't remember. It's my mind, it just drifts. I do have, I believe it or not, I did actually take down some notes for this episode of all the things I should be talking about. So, uh, here we go, episode 68 you this i'm now just going to read the notes i wrote you talked about hope i no, i didn't talk about but you should talk about hotel infrastructure brackets plus hotel car park closed brackets and traffic lights oh well there you go there's gonna be some traffic lights in this video not sure where we'll uh, enjoy that to go oh no i know where they're gonna go i mentioned this last episode where uh, i added the staff the staff road basically intersects the public road that takes guests out of the park and back onto the A road in the arterial, you know, public roadway thing. <laughs> and uh, to kind of stop guests being able to go onto the staff roads, I added like barriers that prevent the people from going onto the staff road. The staff road is occluded by a barrier, but then when a staff car needs to cross, the barriers will see them approach and they'll open and they can cross. But obviously that means that members of the public will just carry on crossing that road. So when the barriers open, the staff will then cross and potentially get T-boned by a member of the public who unknowingly didn't didn't realise that there was a road there. So we're going to be adding some traffic lights. This was a really horrible set of sentences, I think. I'm just now, I'm just like thinking back whilst also talking at the same time, so it's really awkward. I'm trying to think back what exactly it was I said. And like, yes, I really don't think that made a lot of sense. But we're going to press on anyway. You will see what I mean. You'll see what I meant when we get to that part in the video, because now it is time to continue with not doing that and doing this. Placing lamp posts. So it's not like there was anything really engaging to talk about going on on the screen, it's just me placing lamp posts. A lot of lamp posts, you might have noticed, and that's because I'm placing them along with uh, some curbing, some barrier, and I've said this before, the reason I'm placing lamp posts at such high frequency is because I wanted all the lamp posts along this street to be positioned in the same place relative to the barrier that they're attached to and the curb that they're on and it would be much easier just to duplicate the curbs with a street lamp on every segment uh, and then just delete the street lamps as necessary to get the desired frequency at the end rather than place all of the curbs with no street lamps and then have to awkwardly place street lamps along the path after the fact trying to get them all the same height and angle and position relative to the fence. It's it's much more difficult to do it that way. This is the best way. It just looks a bit weird whilst you're constructing it to have so many uh, lamps along the path. But there is the path. That's pretty much done. There's a few things that didn't quite work when I placed them. Not quite sure why, because I thought I was using the uh, advanced tool move. But there you are. Shows that, that, uh, that really proves that I really should pay more attention to what's going on the screen so I can now enlighten you all as to why there are these bits that didn't work quite so well. But I guess it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. And you guys probably saw me placing them and saw that transpire. And if you don't, if you didn't, then... Uh, you know, it's uh, it's current year, isn't it? You could just rewind the video. We have the technology now to do that. And uh, yeah, there, there we are. Just, just like I say, just making sure that the ground is not clipping through the uh, <laughs> the curb, and also making sure there are no phantom floating trees along the route. And it's coming together pretty well. I think it's coming together pretty nicely. Uh, again, does look very weird, doesn't it, when you zoomed out this far and you get all those lampposts? But now we're going to just go through and delete them all as necessary to get a slightly more realistic look to this pathway or driveway road if you will <laughs> uh, that's a little term i'm gonna coin road and it, it'll look it'll look better but basically is what i'm saying here <laughs> i don't say much in the way of meaningful commentary on these videos but when i do i forget <laughs> but yeah it's uh wow well, it's i was just reflecting it, it is gonna be weird not making planet coaster videos for this comment this this um this channel, <laughs> I forgot the word. Uh, it's going to be weird not making Planet Coaster videos every Wednesday, my dudes. You know, it's going to be 
something's going to be missing from this channel, I think. Like, oh, I know a fraction of this channel's audience actually watches these videos, but for me, I consider this a three-show-a-week channel, and, like, I, I take as much pride in my Planet Coaster videos as I do for my Kerbal Space Program videos. I know it probably doesn't show <laughs> from the uh, the quality of these videos, but I like, to, I like to have a slightly more relaxed tone. When it comes to making Planet Coaster commentaries. Like, I think my overall commentating style of KSP is also fairly relaxed and chilled and conversational. Certainly in comparison to Space This Week, which is, you know, very broadcasty, scripted sort of thing. KSP is a lot more laid back. But then you got Planet Coaster. And uh, actually, I just paused the commentary just then because I did a massive burp of drinking Pepsi. And it's a bit gassy. And a part of me thought about just leaving it in. Because it's a conversation. But I also, like, I don't want to make you guys feel sick. So I did it and did it out. But that doesn't mean, like, Planet Coaster is just a lot more chilled. Like, I just recorded the commentary for my Kerbal Space Program video. Which I'm not sure if it's actually out for you guys yet. I think it is. I think it came out last Saturday. I'm trying to think of where we are in terms of which episodes are uploaded so far. So this Wednesday will be episode 67. Let me read that. No, so it's not even out for you guys yet. It's coming out in a few days. It's the next installment of Life on Lath. And literally, I record the commentary in Sony Vegas. Like, I just record. I edit the footage all together, and then I will commentate. And Planet Coaster, typically, I will sit down and just commentate over the entire thing. And I maybe pause the commentary three or four times. Tops, I'm going to zoom out. How many times have I paused this one? Right, yeah, once. And I did that perp, <laughs> which I think is a fairly valid time to pause it. Other than that, I just sit back and I dictate and I just let the stream of consciousness take me to wherever it wants to take me. Whereas Kerbal Space Program, I'm pretty sure, literally, I think it was like 15 times stopped. Now, it was a long video and, well, that's it. It was a long video and there were specific things I wanted to talk about at each segment in the video, like the nuances of doing a particular thing that I didn't want. Well, you guys, you only make up a small portion of my audience. I'm going to give you a, a sneak preview. It's me landing a surface base on Laith, but on a very small island on Laith. And Laith is one of Jules Moons, which is the analogue for Jupiter, to anyone here that doesn't play Kerbal Space Program. And it was very difficult to do that. And I wanted to talk about the process I went through in terms of landing a very un-aerodynamic thing on a on a small island it, and it was very difficult basically and so I wanted to go through that I wanted to talk about the process in explicit detail whereas on Planet Coaster I mean what have I even done this episode it's basically been an entire episode of me placing curbs and uh, and paths and that's it and so there's not much I really need to actively talk about so I don't really have to worry too much about keeping the commentary fresh and on topic or like a couple of space programs will go on like a rambly tangent and I'm like, oh wait, hang on, I really needed to talk about that thing whilst it was on screen and I didn't, so I now need to pause, scrub the last, I don't know, 40 seconds of commentary and uh, redo it but talk about that thing I needed to talk about is an example of why I need to pause commentary so often in Kerbal Space Program. And obviously in Space This Week, it's kind of the other way around. I do the commentary first and then edit to the commentary because the commentary is like super scripted. It's all like very, very relevant. There's no fluff. Um, so that kind of has to be done that way. Whereas Kerbal Space Program and especially Planet Coaster, I'm okay with a bit of fluff. I'm, a bit of, I'm okay with like not necessarily always on topic, which is why for these videos and Kerbal Space Program videos, I edit the footage first and then just dictate over whatever it was I edited. And hopefully, and hopefully it turned out okay. And you know, I'm doing fairly well as a as a KSP YouTuber. I don't do too badly. Well, I think we're on. We we recently hit 350,000 subscribers, which is uh, remarkable. And I still have a hard time like saying that out loud without it just sounding ridiculous. But it's true. And you know, I am humbled on a daily basis for the, about uh, regarding the support that I get on these vi on not just Planet Coaster videos. I mean, just my my channel in general. And it's because of you guys. You guys are like the the diehard fans, right? Watching Planet Coaster. Uh, I realize that a small proportion of you probably only come here for Planet Coaster. And I am very sorry that I've just announced my termination of this content on this channel. But like, ah, oh, look at that. I'm just seeing that overview of Velocity Lake. And I'm just seeing all the memories that come with it. Because it's been such a, it's been a big part of my life, Velocity Lake. And it's not just because I've 
played a lot of the game and spent a long time making this part. But it's like, yeah, but every week I've had to think, okay, I've got to make my Planet Coaster video now. I've got to do my commentary, got to do my thing. And like, we've developed little tropes in this series, haven't we? Like, every episode starts with a complete incoherent mess of me saying, this is the series in which I make a theme park called the Boss. <laughs> Let's say that again. <laughs> this is me making a theme park called Velocity Lake in the theme park building game Planet Coaster. And yeah, that's what I mean, right? It's like this little trope where it doesn't make much sense. Maybe I'm just making no sense at all at this point because I'm getting so emotional, guys. <laughs> But yeah, it's been a big part of my life is what I'm trying to say. It's been such a huge thing. Like I have to think about this every day or every week and just plan the videos out and make sure I've got the content all up to scratch. Like, oh, how much more Planet Coast Coast content have I got? Do I need to edit some more? Do I need to record some more? Et cetera, et cetera. It's been a huge thing for the past three years. And it feels weird to suddenly be like ripping the bandaid off, so to speak, and moving on. But I, I just think it has to be done. For the sake of my uh, my career and my channel's health as a whole, <laughs> uh, it, it just needs to be done. But it, it's it's definitely not an easy decision, and it's it's really something I should have done whilst Neptune Park was still going on. But I didn't because I love making these videos. But there has to come a point where I have to say enough is enough. I I think it's time that. <laughs> I, I don't know I think it's just because this year uh, now I say it, it's because of 2020 isn't it because YouTube is recommending other videos of that thing that we can't can we even talk about that I have no idea who cares <laughs> but you know I, I, I think a, a lot of non-health channels are getting recommended more than other channels which might might explain my view drops this year but this year my view drops have been the worst they've ever been um and I, I just think at this point i i do want my view count to decline any further and i think the only way to ensure that doesn't happen is uh by cutting off the uh the uh the underdog of this channel the, the, the i've got a video series I upload once a week that never gets any views relative to my other ones and i don't think that looks particularly good in the eyes of the youtube algorithm tm so yeah that's why it had to be done it's a sad, it's a sad thing, but it has to, all good things must come to an end. You live long enough, you see yourself become the villain. I think there was supposed to be a beginning part to that phrase, but you guys have seen the Dark Knight. No, you know what I mean, right? Anyway, by the way, here we are building the, um, the staff car by the way. Moving <laughs> on, I don't think I can really move on now, can I? <laughs> like, after that dark tangent. But yes, I, um, I did say I wanted to make a... A staff car part for the hotel complex. There it is. You see, we might have seen I uh, added a DeLorean just there from the Back to the Future DLC, and that's because although every time I make a car park in Planet Coaster, I like to have some sort of Easter egg car in it. So hidden in the main car park of a Velocity Lake, there's like all of the DLC cars. So the Knight Rider car, the DeLorean, the Ghostbusters car, and a few others. Uh, and same for the other parks I've made as well. And um, in fact, actually, no. Now I say that out loud. Have I ever made a car park before yes i did yes ne neptune park i was just, i just completely forgot about neptune park's existence despite the fact that i've brought it up several times in this commentary i was thinking of like crimson tower but in neptune park had a had a car park didn't it yes um but um, yeah no even i i like to add a little easter egg cars just as a little i don't know a thing to see it's like model railways again right a lot of model railways they have like a little easter egg going on in the background um, like a DeLorean in a car park or something like that. I don't know. I can't think of an example off the top of my head. Um, yeah, that's, um, I mean, we're pretty much at the end of this episode now, aren't we? So uh, do I have any closing thoughts that I want to mention or any things that I didn't think to address at the time? I don't think so. I think we've done pretty well. Like, um, as, did I even build the traffic light? Actually, now I think about it. I don't think I did. Oh, gosh, guys, remember when I mentioned that I need to build a traffic light in this episode? Well, here we are in the last minute or however long we've got left. I think it is literally the last minute of the video. <laughs> We're going to build the traffic lights that I promised you guys. And because uh, I live in England... Uh, they're go we're going to paint them black because traffic lights in this country are black. They're not yellow like they are in the America. The America. Great. Thank you, Matt. Uh, how they are in the States, I think. I think they're yellow in America. I I've never really paid attention to it. But uh, I've never seen a yellow traffic light in this country. And they're painted yellow here in this game by default. So I'm assuming somewhere yellow traffic lights are the norm and... I would assume by that logic it would be the United States of America because that's where most of this game's demographic lives. I don't know. Anyway, there we are. We've built the traffic light. Hope you guys enjoyed that. That that um.
that much anticipated traffic light construction. Anyway, here's a little overview of the park. If it wasn't obvious, that was what was happening. And yeah, wow. And just like that, we fade to the second to last end screen we'll ever do on this series. And that's kind of sad in a way. Like, we've only got one episode left of the construction of this theme park. So I hope you guys look forward to that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll see you guys for one last time next week.